Hello and welcome. I am Nikki Coffin. Hello, I'm Katie Green. And welcome to this masterclass today, how to build a candidate attraction machine that will create a predictable flow of quality candidates week in, week out, day in, day out, on tap without you, the business owner or the, the, the top performer in, in your business having to get involved. Now, both of us um, over the, dare we say it, 13 years that we, we've been running this business, we've, we've helped uh, hundreds of recruitment business owners like you to create seven and eight figure recruitment businesses, duplicating the systems that both Katie and I have built in our separate recruitment businesses. And in fact, um, I've personally grown my own recruitment business to 3.2 GP turnover. Katie built hers to 10 million uh, turnover with the, the exact system that we're going to be sharing today. And we were both able to master this candidate generation, this candidate attraction machine, so it made a big, big difference. Now, I know we're live, so it'd be lovely to, to, um, to see who's, who's here with us. So if you could put into the chat box your name, say hi, um, and just to know if you've got any questions, we are live today. So if you've got any questions, please just type them into the box. We will answer them as we go along. And anything linked into around the issues that you're having with candidates, candidate attraction, getting candidate commitment, like what basically the problems and um, challenges that you're experiencing currently, we are here to answer all. We are not going to hold back on anything. So what I want you to, to do off the back of today is just imagine that you had a consistent and predictable flow of exclusive quality candidates that just dropped in on tap with you without you having to drive the activity and get get involved in doing sort of 12 14 hour days can you imagine how that would change your world you know I, when we've done this with our clients we found that it has created a significant amount more of more time a day you know anywhere between four and six hours extra a day but more importantly what it's done is it's created space for for you and for them to focus on the areas that you should be, which are adding a lot more value. So building a business that you're working on rather than in. And ultimately, and this is what we're all about, you know, creating financial and time freedom so that you can do more of what you want without being trapped in this business that's sort of created, created around you. So that is what is on offer today. And our hope is you're going to get so much out of this presentation that you want to continue the conversation and explore explore how we can potentially help you work work quicker work faster uh, by working with us together now these masterclasses and certainly this masterclass katie and i feel very um strongly about paying paying what we've learned forward you know we've been very blessed over the years to have amazing mentors and coaches you've taught us these systems that fast track success really quickly and it, and we feel it's our duty to let other people know about this so we are going to give you as much of the good stuff as we can today. It's not going to just be a sort of broad, um, sort of flat training that, that maybe you might see from other people. We're going to give you our all. And if all you do is get just some tips on how to implement this within your business today, then that is totally OK. So here's what you can expect in our small time together. So our goal is to make a big impact um, by giving you the exact steps to restructure your business so that you can create this machine that generates quality candidates without you having to be involved. And then how you can then build up a pool of these great candidates and get them so that you can dip into that pool. You can send a message, um, maybe a couple of messages, and they go, yep, I'm interested. And then you jump on a call with them and get them exclusively. So that is what this is all about. And, and we want to help you hit any goal that you've got in your business. So say it's a GP of a million, it, whether it's GP of half a million, whether it's a GP of 100 million, it doesn't really matter. We, we are here to help you to create that momentum in your business mm. so that you're working smarter rather than harder. Mm. So if you're thinking like, how do these ladies know what it's like? Now, we... I've not only helped a lot of people to achieve these results, hundreds of people over, over the years, but we have both built businesses from scratch. And specifically, Katie, like you would say, we're, we, we we both worked in very candidate short markets. Yeah. 
And we both were able to, to create these machines where we had a consistent flow of candidates. Would you say that would be fair, Katie? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I would add to that, Nikki, that I even think what you and I have learned in the last, yeah, 13 years, um, on top of that, there, there's been some shifts more recently in the way that we need to engage and we need to have, you know, that interaction, the initiation, but also that, that engagement and that nurture sequence with candidates. And I used to think and, and, and feel quite privileged that I thought that the business that I worked in, we were pretty and um, innovative around how we actually engaged with our candidates. But I know that even now in the market, in the world that we're all working in, in the, this world of recruitment, there has been some significant changes even further afield on how people want to experience um, that, um, those stages, that process with recruitment business owners. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. And this is groundbreaking stuff. Because yeah. if I'd known all of this, <laughs> you know, back then, I, I, I would have added even more to it. So, um, yeah. And since COVID, you know, things have changed, like, on their head, like how we how we do things now is different, even sort of 18 months ago. Definitely. So yeah, you're right. It's all about the candidate experience and how you get them to interact with you so that, that you, you you get these um what we call you know exclusive candidates. Mm. So we have totally um been there and done it. And and you know, if you are somebody here who is you know, working really hard to find candidates and, and you're even getting them out on interview, but then you're maybe either getting ghosted or these candidates are getting counter-offered or they're getting multiple offers from, from your competitors. Like, know that you're not alone. That's happening across the market. Um, and we've got answers, answers for that. But also, if you just can't seem to find these people, and, you know, we hear all the time, there's no candidates, there's no candidates. And here's the thing, right? This is, we're not in a candidate short market market we're actually it's, it's a systems problem it's not a candidate short problem it's a systems problem and the thing about that is because when you know that it's a systems problem that's something you can fix versus saying there's no candidates in the market can't find them anywhere oh no how are we going to hit, hit our targets yeah so absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely and i think this has been a real game changer for our clients that we work with and also our community in our Facebook group, the Recruitment Business Accelerator group, where we've been posting, you know, a lot of content and support around candidate attraction machine, because this, <clears throat> this really moves the situation that you're in from this mindset of, you know, the problem, if you like, is the market to actually the opportunity is in my hands. Um, and that that is a big paradigm shift that our clients have been benefiting from. So, yeah, stay tuned seriously for 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 this forty five minutes because what we're going to share with you is it could change your world. Yeah, definitely. So the first thing to realise is this is a systems problem, not candidate shortage problem, and that there is a system that you can implement in your business that will fix this, and it will fix it very very quickly. And when I say quickly, like we've seen with our clients, them getting results within within days, you know, candidates coming in out on interview within days. So it's it's just knowing what to do and how to do it. Now, there is a bit of background I'd like to share with you, because the first thing I want to share is that there are four machines that you need to be building in your recruitment business. If you do want a, a high performing self-managing business that can run without you and the first machine is what we call the attraction machine. So the attraction machine is attracting clients, jobs, candidates, you know, bringing them into the funnel. The second machine is then the conversion machine. So how you convert those leads, so whether it's jobs or candidates, how you convert those into what we call gold jobs, so really good quality jobs or really good quality exclusive candidates. So there's a, there's a process behind that conversion bit. The third machine is your service delivery, which is delivering on the promise. So if you've won a job, you know, fulfilling that job, if you've got an exclusive candidate you're taking to market, how you then do, do that part of the service. And then the fourth machine is what we call your economic machine, which is a back office, making sure you get paid, making sure that you're legally safe. So these are the four machines as a business owner strategically you need to build. And what we find is most recruitment businesses will have one of these machines fixed and 
three of them are totally broken. And the problem is all of these machines interlink. And so at the minute, you might be seeing, you know, if you look at your client attraction machine, you are like absolutely swamped with jobs. But because you haven't got your candidate attraction or conversion machine fixed, you haven't got enough candidates to put into all these jobs coming. And vice versa, you could have an amazing account management or delivery team that hasn't got enough jobs coming in because your attraction machine's not working or you haven't got focused on that. Same with candidates. So all of these machines interlink. But what we're going to be talking about today is machine number one, which is your attraction machine. Now, there's one other thing I want to say about this model is that this these models are the same in any type of business that you work in. However, recruitment is slightly different because we've got two products. We've got candidates and we've got clients. So in our machines, we need a machine for client attraction, client conversion, client delivery. And we then need a, a machine, a separate machine for candidate attraction, candidate conversion and delivery. So actually, we need seven machines. And this is where most recruitment business owners fall down because they don't have a separate machine to generate candidates. And this is why we've got an issue at the minute, because there's not been real focus on candidates. If you think about it in in the, in COVID times, everyone was like, oh, my God, we've got no jobs. So all the focus went on jobs, forgot about candidates. But even, even pre-COVID, pre I can tell you the ha less than the handful of clients that we started working with actually had a proper system set up to generate candidates. Mm -hmm. So... So basically, I don't think, Nikki, um, <clears throat> sorry, interrupt. I don't, I don't think and, you know, I can go back to, you know, you and I've worked in recruitment for, well, over 20 years. And I don't remember people teaching people around this importance of a candidate um, experience or a candidate attraction machine or a candidate service offering, um, unless maybe, you know, to be fair to some search organisations, maybe that was something that was a bit more important for them. But actually, we've always been fairly client focused in the world of recruitment, I think, um, in certainly in the times that I've known. And so this is why I think a lot of people might have heard of it, might have a few things set up, maybe a couple of, of things in their organisation that they think actually is offering a service offering to those candidates but what we're talking about here is something that's very systemized a, pro a specific process um, that really really walks through how they actually as a customer how they experience your brand both before during and after and that's yep. um, yeah and I'd love I'd love to hear from the people listening in you know like if you could say like what's one what's one of these machines you know you've got set in place that's working real, real for you which is the machine which is the machine you've got sorted and which is the machine that you need to to, to tweak now so when you're building this attraction machine we're going to be focusing on the attraction part of this machine um what we're talking about here this machine is designed to build a system or a funnel that will consistently enable you to, to attract and win good quality candidates predictably right and so when you can do this, you'll be able to increase the full rate for your jobs. You know, you, you increase the number of placements that you make. You'll also increase your brand. But off the back of this, by delivering a really amazing service to your candidates, not every candidate, but certain type of candidates, you will generate really good quality jobs as well. Um, and what we find is the, the, proper, the biggest mistakes we're seeing happening at the moment is people, a lot of, People are relying on job boards. They are re relying on CV searching sites. And the thing about this is, as soon as you're getting your candidates from these places, you're coming into this competition because guaranteed that they'll have been contacted by a whole host of other people. So you're already at a disadvantage before you've even started because you're having to compete against, you know, multiple other 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 companies so that's one one of the biggest mistakes the second thing that we see people making a big mistake on is they don't understand this concept called the 80 20 rule which is Pareto's law where 20 percent of your results 20 percent of your candidates actually give you 80 percent of your results and when you the cool thing about this is when you know what your 20 percent of candidate is 
and you can say, right, how do we get more of these? This is where you can double or triple your results really quickly. But and I, and I know why it doesn't happen. It's because we get sort of caught in this craziness, chaos um, on a day to day basis when we go into work. Very rarely do we stop back and we analyze, like, who are my 20 percent? So that's the second mistake. The third thing is um, we see lots of people working multiple roles. So, you know, one minute they might be doing HR, next moment they might be doing finance, next moment they might be doing, I don't know, customer service. Or even if they're, say, in a niche, so say they're in construction or engineering, they might, one moment they might be placing a CAD designer, next moment they're placing a senior design engineer. And so you're constantly having to start the search from scratch. You can't repurpose candidates. So spreading themselves too thin. And the, the thing with this is when you change your mindset on how you approach it, then, then things really will change. And we call this the business fast track formula. So there's three things, three P's we call when we're, we're building up this attraction machine. So first of all, we need to prepare, like really get clear on what's our ideal candidate. And we need to really understand what their pains and desires are. And so then we then build a target list of these candidates and we create a message that lands into them and they're like oh my god it's like this person's in my head yes i would like that they know exactly what i need so that's the first p second p is then process and this is mapping out or modeling out your process which is very bespoke for your business on reaching out to these people and the third p is then how we nurture and we reach out to these and we convert these people over time into highly um High quality candidates. So these, those are three P's. Now, I wanted just to um, say, like, so this machine, it, it it will run day in, day out, week in, week, week out, without you being involved. And this is where it is about consistency in numbers for quite a lot of this. And we're going to talk talk to you about how that works. Um, but what I wanted just to show you is. And we're going to be using the lovely Marcus Nansen as a case study through, throughout this, because this is an example of how quickly you can get results and um, how Marcus actually went from, you know, doing zero, zero to 5K a month, feast and famine months to consistently 30 to 43,000 pound months with a team of, of fundamentally two people. It's actually three people, 3.25 people. But how he did that, um, and he also had been doing three the 360 model. He was exhausted. He didn't know where to go. He was questioning what was wrong with him. And how you go from that to being really confident, getting consistent placements month in, month out, week in, week out. So we're going to show you how Marcus did it because this puts it into perspective for you. Now... There's one other bit of mindset I'd like to share with you. And this is what we call the less is more mindset, because the truth is the path to scaling your business to seven or eight figures is always, always, always simpler, easier and faster than you think. And the problem is, I think we, well, I think it's a, a trait for a lot of people that they think there's a lot, you know, they're not doing enough or that there's these I don't know, we call them shiny squirrels. These things, like I'm missing out on stuff if I don't implement it. So we then keep implementing more things into our business. But actually, there will probably be one funnel, one part of the system that is giving you 80% of your results. And if you can get into that funnel and you get into that system and you optimize it and you become a masterful at it, this is where you see results really, really quickly. And what the funnel we're talking about today is your candidate attraction funnel. And... The other thing with this is this mindset that less is more. And what we're talking about here is doing a lot less, but doing a lot better with a lot less. So this is, you know, for example, you know, the, you'll put the same amount of effort into placing a candidate who's maybe on a 20, 25K base, same, exactly the same process to placing somebody who's on a 40 to 45K base, other than the difference in the fee level. Um, you know, becoming masterful at a certain part of your process. So whether it's, I don't know, gaining exclusivity from a candidate or, you know, 
marketing out that candidate to great places when you get really good at doing that with a lot less people but you do a lot more for a lot less people this is where you might interview four people a month and you'll place four people a month mm. and imagine like imagine what your week would be like is all you needed to do was find an interview one person work them make a placement Mm. I think the thing here, Nikki, as well is, and, and we certainly, you know, when I'm talking to people when they come on and start working with us, is is what a lot will be happening is that we've been taught. And if you think about it, this goes right back to school as well. We've been taught that, you know, you need more, like you need more clients, you need more candidates, you need more job vacancies, you need, you know, grow your team. Like I was always back in the old days, I was always told that when you grew your profit was because you grew your you grew everything in your business. Um, and, you know, they were all interlinked. And what that does for us often is it creates this focus point on things externally of our business for the answers. And so we think that the answer to what we need is actually outside of ourselves. And one of the things that is, you know, a game changer to know is that actually what where the answers are, are actually within so within your organization, I know we're going to talk about this, but in the in terms of how you do that, but the answers lie within. And this is where when you start to really bring your focus into your business and what it is that you do, like you're saying that really zoning in on those areas that where we make the tiny tweaks that's when people will get at like like significant, dramatic, unbloody believable. Am I allowed to swear because we're lying? Unbelievable, you know, d- d- uh, changes in their business. And so, you know, that is a game changer in itself. So I would love to invite everybody who's listening to this is to start to shift their awareness from outside of their business and worrying about what their competition are doing or anyone else for that matter and go inward and start to look into your business and your data and your stats and what is going on in your business and your teams because that is where your answer will be and we're going to share with you today how you do that yeah. but yeah. and and we call these the magic profit levers um because there will be certain things in your business in your process if you just take one of these levers and you you master it will significantly increase your results so for example like one of our magic profit levers is if you looked at the percentage of jobs that you're filling Mm -hmm. um most people when we speak to them are filling between four and twenty percent of jobs and we're like my god there's a huge opportunity here like if you could increase it to 30 or 40 percent you will double or triple your result and there's certain things you can do very very quickly that will increase your job's fill rate. Um, one of the other magic profit levers is candidates, you know, and we call these NPCs most placeable candidates because if you can master this part of the process, so you find these guys, you interview them, you get them exclusive, exclusively, and you deliver an amazing service to them, that will they'll not only open doors to clients that you would love to be working with, but you those, those candidates then turn into your clients at some point, whether you place them or not. Mm. So these magic profit levers, and there's there are numerous places, but there's probably about five that are real biggies. And I mean, we then take one of these five and we work, and even one of these five can generate, with a team of between two to, to five, will generate anywhere between a 300K to a million pounds uplift a year. So... Okay. Now, we've talked about this. Right. So what we've talked about here is focusing on quality versus quantity, doing a lot more with a lot less, you know, focusing and placing three to four VIP candidates a month. Now, if you've got a team, you know, like imagine if your consultants were placing three or four candidates a month versus probably what they're doing at the moment between one, maybe two, you'd be lucky sometimes with three, three placements into high quality jobs where you will be working smarter, not harder, and, you know, billing an awful lot more. So we've talked about the magic profit leaves, but the one we want to talk about today is what we call the MPC one. And this 
profit lever is designed to find a very specific type of candidate, the type of candidate that you know you would be able to place five times over if you got them. And then how you then build a pool of these candidates. And then you dip into this pool with a message or a phone call or a, a text and they say, yes, please. And then you get them exclusively and then find their dream job. So that's what this profit lever is about that we're going to share with you. And I don't know whether you can read this, but so when we did this with Marcus, we knew that success leaves clues. And the first thing we did was an analysis on his business. We looked at we looked at the candidates he'd placed in the last 24 months. And we looked at what the commonalities in these candidates. So what was their job title? What was their salary level? Where were they based? Where, where did we find these candidates? What source? Was it LinkedIn? Was it CRM? Was it referrals, recommendations? Was it job boards? You know, what was the source of these candidates? And then, more importantly, we, we looked at all of these candidates and there was a specific type of candidate that he was really good at placing. And Marcus works in the mortgage space and there was a specific job title. And so what we did was we looked at that person specifically. What are your pains and desires? You know, if you're a candidate in that area and it wasn't necessarily about recruitment, and this is the other thing, right? So what were the things in their current job that they really were really holding them back? And with Marcus, he, he the biggest issues that his candidates have were they were having to generate their own leads. They had no admin support, um, which meant they were doing a lot of the work themselves. And there was very poor career progression. Those were the things that if they had those in their their company they would be way more successful and because we got this very specific type of candidate we were able to, to nail these, these these pains and these desires so we were then been able to build a message around it and then the reason i'm sharing this is because i want you to, to show like imagine if you were to send that out one message to 25 people that you'd connected with on linkedin eight people come back to you Six people say, yes, please, I'd like to go on interview. And you make three placements mm. within a week. Nice. That's the power. And that's because Marcus got really clear on this specific type of candidate, this specific niche, and he really understood what their pains and desires were. And then he just targeted, you know, less is more. 25 people, three placements. I think, <clears throat> Nikki, with this is sometimes um, – because there might be people, I'd love to know, actually, if you are listening and you think, well, I do this um, and I'm not getting those results, pop it in the chat box because there are like what Nikki is talking about here about, you know, pain avoiders, pleasure seekers. There's there's specific context and, and content that goes into those emails. That is the difference that makes the difference. And I think people feel like sometimes that I, Katie, I know my avatar OK, and, and I do reach out to them and we do have tailored um, in mails or emails or content that is going to them. And the difference is when we look at them and we compare to what we teach our clients. And, and it's not just one in mail, by the way, there's a sequence of these that work. That's the difference that Nikki's referring to here. So you really, really it is about delving deep into those pain points and those desires and really understanding them. So your marketing does speak to them. But I, uh, you're totally right, Katie. And I think the, the, the problem that a lot of people have is they're trying to, to talk to multi multi yeah. um, types of different people at the, same you know, time. You know, at the same time with the same message. And that's why, you know, so, for example, if you're you know, an MD's pains and desires are going to be very different to a trainee. So you, you can't create yes. you know, one message that speaks to all, which is why, and we, we call this the five ones, don't we, where mm. when you get really clear on, you know, who's, who's one target client, one funnel, one conversion tool, fully committed for one year, and you you optimize you know one one source so for example like so marcus his one source is linkedin so he then is like right how do we i become masterful at linkedin so that i can be in front of this type of, of candidate so what the other thing that he did once he got really clear on what their pains and desires were he started then doing 
medicine sort of phase yeah. two, but you know, like webinars and yeah. adding massive value. But never talked about recruitment, never talks about recruitment, but he brings in like a sales trainer mm. on how to generate more leads in your I, you know, IFA practice. And then as it's just adding great value, but then off the back of that, there's people who turn up to his events, then he starts a conversation behind the scenes. And funnily enough, those people at some point will turn into either clients or candidates. So that is, that's the difference here. Uh So the first step in this is what we call defining your, the business X-ray. You need to really get clear on who your avatar candidate is. And there's a great quote by Stephen Covey on this, where he says, leaders climb to the highest tree in the jungle to make sure they're in the right jungle. But most managers, i.e. most recruitment business owners, are so busy chopping away at the undergrowth, they don't even realise they're in the wrong jungle. And I remember doing this with another client, actually, Katie, several years ago, a guy called Matt. And he had a team of 12. They did te- technology recruitment. All these 12 were 360 billers all had their own niche and we did this business x-ray and we looked at the candidates they placed and there was about eight placements in this um, area and at the time I was like who are these data managers I think it was data scientists because his average fee with these guys was double the average fee of everything else it was like 25 grand I'm like who are these candidates Matt he's like oh they're data scientists and I said well why aren't you doing more of these and he's like I can't get can't find these candidates Can't get my hands on them. If I could find them, I could place a zillion times over. So I said, well, what's your, you know, where's your your team to, you know, get hold of these candidates, you know, to to build build out your talent pool? He's like, we don't have one. Now, Matt was very, very savvy on this. So what he actually did is like he saw that he needed to create this, this team that generated candidates. So he took four people from his 12 and he got them into you know, um, to build up this I don't, fundamentally referral and headhunt team. And those guys found, I think it was in another four consultants, they would find them two candidates, exclusive candidates a month. They made an extra million pounds net profit in six months by doing that. And it's all because he's like, I know I need to focus on this, this one thing, and I need to become masterful at finding data scientists and getting them exclusive and then marketing them out. And yeah, made some significant ROIs. So the other thing about the, the business x-ray is um, once you get clear on who your candidates are, it's it's then having the time, you know, how do we do this outreach? And, and there's another issue that, that is underlined. If you're working the 360 model, you will not be able to... to consistently get a flow of quality candidates you're going to have to change your structure and we're not going to talk about that in detail today but just know if you are working 360 you're creating a lot of work for yourself and it's probably like marcus you're having these dips peaks peaks and um, peaks and troughs so um right now here's the thing when you focus on everything you focus on nothing and what I mean by that is when you, you know, we've got this thing which is called the inch wide mile deep. So when you pick like one type of candidate and you know it's a candidate that you can place five times over and you make it your focus to build a pool of these candidates, you will be able to um, dip into that pool and place these people quickly. Versus if you were doing like the mile wide inch deep across multiple job sectors, you never, you can never get under under the skin. You're, you're spreading yourself too thin. So when you focus on everything, you focus on nothing. And that's really important to think. And success leaves clues. So when we're defining your avatar candidate, we need to look at your existing data. As Katie said, like the answers are right underneath your nose. And we're going to look at your placements over the last 12 months. Who were the type of candidates who gave you 80% of your results? Mm -hmm. So what was the job title, location, skill set, salary, niche? And what we're looking for is patterns. Like with Matt, you know, that was... Out of 150 placements, there were like eight. And I'm like, who are these eight? Because I could see in front of me, like, you've made more out of these eight candidates than you've done out of 50 of your other candidates. But also importantly, what source did they come from? Was it LinkedIn? Was it CRM? Was it referrals? You need to understand that. And then you're looking, what are the commonalities? What stands out? What are the patterns? So we just 
we put this all into an Excel spreadsheet and then we just look at the data and then look what the commonality is, what the patterns. So that's what Marcus did. He got clear on his 20% of candidates. He understood their biggest problem and he also got very clear on their desires. So once we got this, the next step was we needed to get it out of Marcus's head and into a system. And this is a bit of a truth bomb here. You know, I, the reason why the majority of recruitment business owners grow really quickly or, or build a business that can thrive, which is highly profitable without them being at the centre of it, is because they have got this mindset we call a business builder mindset, where fundamentally they have restructured the, the, the system so that the energy input comes from the team machines, technology, money, not your own hands on efforts. And a business builder can, for example, input one and get back 10 or 100. But most recruitment business owners we speak to are stuck in this mindset where they, or they're stuck in this business where they are like the center of everything. And when, you know, when you're, everything evolves around you, you become the bottleneck. But, you know, also off, off the back of this, you could input 10 or 100 and sometimes only get one, one or 10 back. Mm -hmm. And this is why we see some people who are totally financially and time free where others are paid less than they pay some of their team. Mm -hmm. And I remember several years ago, Katie's like, Nikki, and this is this, the que this is the question that really woke me up. She said, what happens if you get run over by a bus? Because everything is in your head. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're totally right. And I mean, it was it was a really yeah. hard hitting question. But like you, I feel as a, you know, as a joint owner of the business, it's our responsibility to make sure that we have the systems and processes and structures in place. So, A, we can go on holiday and step away from business. But B, that if something, you know, does happen to you, that the business can survive without it. I, I feel it's irresponsible to not do it because you're say if you're hiring and you've got people in your business and your team it's just not fair it's just not fair on the other people and that was and I think yeah I mean you're right you know it's a win-win for everyone I think for a lot of business owners because I was talking to somebody just earlier today and and they're in this situation and um at the moment and there and it was oh, but if I I know just people just don't do it properly you know they don't do it the way I want to do it or you know I just I'm worried um that it won't get done and so there's this element of feeling as though you can't you know people think oh but if I do that what's actually going to happen but again but but this is the problem. It, it, then you become that bottleneck and there is never going to be any growth. You know, you've reached a ceiling that is is just going to end up. You're going to be stay in that zone, but actually get more and more um, stressed and, and unhappy. So there has to be, you know, you've got to you've got to, to be able to um, extend from that and to grow from that. You have to have you've got to have mechanisms around you to make that happen. And the honest truth is, it's a lot easier and simpler than you think it is. Um, that complexity is generally in somebody's head. So this is about the steps that you take and how you do that. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it, it, it actually is a lot easier than you realise. And I, I think it's not our natural way of thinking, you know, certainly a lot of people that we work with are what we call big creator types. So they're great with the big picture, but when it comes to detail and process, they really don't yet. But actually there are people who help you to take what's in your head put it into the system, the way to do it, which is much easier than, and here's the, the other thing guys is when you, you know, it's fine when things are small, you know, you, you actually, when you start a business, you need to be the person who generates everything, but there gets a point in the business where time and energy are finite, you know, it gets, it gets either too big or it's just, there's too much to take on that um, it then creates like total chaos and you hit the ceiling, you can't seem to break through. And the problem here is it's not an effort issue. You can't work yourself out of this mess. It's a system design issue, not a work ethic. So 
you know, just know that. Um, and there's a great quote by Robert Kawasaki, who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he said, you know, if you've got a business that you can't step away from for three, at least three months, when you come back, the business isn't in a stronger position than when you left it. He said, you don't have a business. You actually have a job and a job with a really awful boss who expects ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous um, standards. So you need, just for the sake of, of your sanity, your family sanity, also your teammates to think, right, I need to set this up so that I can step away and, um, and other people can step up. Now, how do we do this? How do we take it out of your head? And there's a really cool process called modeling. This is a, an NLP technique. And if you look, look and ask any top performing business owner, they will know and understand that modeling excellence leads to a significantly improved performance, if not um, the same performance as somebody else. So most sensible people, if they want to achieve something they've never achieved before, they go and find somebody who's done it before and they will copy or model what they've done. And lo and behold, they get achieved the same results, if not similar. So it's, it, it's a top performer trait. It's a smart thing to, to be doing. Um, so what we need to do, though, is you, as the business owner, are the expert on how to attract candidates. You probably don't realize it, but you're absolutely frigging brilliant at this task. So with Marcus, for example, what we did was we got him to map out his process. So let's just skip through this. Okay. So the first thing we did is say, right, Marcus, if you, I want you to, to walk us through exactly what you do step by step when you are going on the lookout for candidates. So, for example, and we, what I did was I got post-it notes, but I put post-it notes on this on the on the on the computer screen. So first thing you said, right, I go onto LinkedIn, I do a billion search um, and look for a certain type of candidate. Then I send them a message. Um, then I follow up with another message a couple of days later, then I put in a phone call, um, and then I do the same on our CRM. And then if somebody then raises their hand, I jump on a quick call with them, I then book them in for a proper interview, I do a full on interview, and then I um, market them, I market them out. So as he was saying this, I was literally mapping out these bigger picture steps, um, sort of using post-it notes. Then I went back. So once we've mapped that out, we went back and said, right, and we call this a note your process. So that first LinkedIn search, like, could you do, like, how could you teach somebody else, else to do that? Would it be like a video, a script, a template? You know, how could you get it so that somebody could do your exact same thing when they're doing search? So he's like, well, I could quite easily write down what my Boolean searches are and I could video myself doing that search on LinkedIn. So like, great. So then when you, you know, what's the message that you send out? He's like, right, well, if I look back through my LinkedIn, I, there's a couple of messages that work really well. So I'm going to take, you know, we could use that as a template. So we basically look, looked at how do we then build out these steps? So somebody could look at each step and literally pick it up and play. Um, and we mapped that out across the whole process. Then the next step, once we've done that, we looked at actually who what skills would somebody need in order to be able to do this well and this this is the difference um this was this was probably his biggest aha ever so for example sending out messages on linkedin doing searches on linkedin or your crm or sending texts or whatever it doesn't if you've got the system to send you could an admin person could do that jesus you know like my my eight-year-old son could probably do that so you don't need actually to be highly skilled to do a majority of, of that, that reach out. However, you do need a level of skill when you start speaking to candidates and when you're talking about the market. So we looked at on each of the steps, what type of person, what type of skills would they need to be able to do that? And then the fourth bit was we looked at what the metrics, how would somebody know that they were doing a good job? So that was mapping out his process. And this is, you know, if this is, this is how you would do it, you know, take Ask yourself, how do I do it so I get those results? What is the first step that I take? And then the next step and then the next step. So you want to map it out. Then, um, okay, so what we've done this. So 
the other thing with Marcus, when we mapped this out, and I am just want to see whether I can find, I'm going to come back to, I'm going to come back to a certain slide. So we've got his, we've got his steps. Then we're like, okay, how do we, how do we set this up so that we get a predictable and consistent flow of people? And, and here's, this is, this is, this is a really important thing to understand. So the fortune is in your follow-up. And I cannot, I cannot underestimate this. Um, well, do not underestimate this because this is absolute gold. Now, some interesting stats for you. When you reach out to candidates, only two to three percent of those candidates are going to be ready now. And they're called what we call they're they're ready now candidates. So if you send out a message to hundred people. Two to three people will raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested. However, 97% of your candidates that you reach out to, you speak to, will not be ready now. But 65% of these will be ready in the next 24 months. Now, just to put that into context, if you reach out to 100 people today, you'll get three people saying yes today. If you have a system that touches and nurtures these guys over 24 months, you will have 65 people out of 100 that will make that, that will turn into to candidates. So if you don't have a system that follows up, you will leave 70% of your sales on the table. So know that your funnel coming in Two to three will say yes today, but 65% will say yes in the next 12 months. So you need a system that builds out on this. So there's consistent touch points every three, six months. And here's the other thing. This is a numbers game, guys. So and small actions taken consistently reap huge rewards. So, for example, if you were to reach out to 20 people on LinkedIn a day, you should get about 40% people saying yes to connect. So you'll have eight people a day accept your connection. Three of those eight people a day will be ready now. So it's approximately 0.24 of a candidate. One candidate a week, five per month. But 65% of these guys will be ready in 24 months. So what that means is if you're reaching out to these guys consistently, you will end up with 112 quality candidates per month if you just do these 20 a day. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Small things but the thing about this consistency is you are not the best person to do it this implementation of systems should not should not be done by you for two reasons one is you will not do it consistently you'll get bored probably after about a day you won't do it um the second thing is it is not a good use of your time you could be paying somebody anywhere between six to ten us dollars an hour to be doing that work whereas you could be generating things that create a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds an hour the second so basically you've got to build and test the system and then we've got to delegate and outsource it and this this powerpoint is really really key and i want you to notice two things along the bottom is the value of activities along the side is the volume of activities so if you want to create a predictable system, you need to break your system into bits. Now, the blue bits are building a target list, sending out messages, sending out connections, um, sending out value add information, like the touch point, the nurture point, the blue point. But can you see there's no value at there's no value added because it doesn't turn into value until somebody raises their hand to say yes. Mm -hmm. The bit where we hit the orange, which is when people say yes, you need there's a 10 to 20 percent value points. So there's like a pre screen that needs to happen at this point. So you need somebody who's got the ability, who's, who's got some sort of skill to have these conversations with your candidates. Then the green side, you can see 35 percent of the value is to assess the candidate's needs. 60% of the value is linked in and around pitching what you can do for them. And then 85% of the, um, the value is to get exclusivity of that candidate and then closing that candidate so they're exclusive with you and the, the, you're going to be marketing them out, whatever you're going to do. There's 100% of the value linked to that. So if you have got a team of people, you need to have like an admin part 
of your talent um, attraction thing. You then have your resourcing. If you like your your people who be speaking to the candidates, pre-screening them, and then you need to be using a level of person, whether it's a consultant or a talent manager, who's then actually having these conversations with the candidates. So you're tying them in. So Katie, like you, um, you were like a master at this in Aspire. So mm-hmm. like, how did you? How did you embed this in your business? Well, <laughs> interestingly enough, going back to what we were saying about the data, the first thing that we realized was that we were placing a low percentage of our candidates. Um, and off the back of that, we actually did something which is called, um, you know, we've got investors in people. We did um, investors in customers. And, and we realized that um, or we got some feedback from our cl- candidates as customers and um, they actually said that the, the one part that they felt that we could improve upon was that they didn't get consistent follow up from us, like they didn't hear from us. So they would hear from us while they were um, live or active. But pre that, you know, if, 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 if you like, we weren't interested and then they didn't hear back from us. So the follow up was awful. So we got really, really Um, we started to obsess about our candidate experience with our business. And what specifically did that look like? What were the touch points of that candidate experience? And going back to what we were saying, what what were the things that our candidates really wanted to hear about? And how specifically did they want to be engaged? Because, um, for example, at the time, we were probably spending a lot of money on job boards, and using job boards as a way of sourcing our candidates. But the reality was our candidates weren't on job boards. And what they really wanted was that experience, that personal touch point experience with us. So we got very clear on what that source was, where our candidates were coming from, what their pain points were, what their desires were. And then we mapped out, it's pretty pretty much what you're saying, Nikki, or what we're sharing here, is what was that journey for them? But we got really good at the nurture sequence. And if we're looking at just taking our graph here, for example, where we really zoned in was from that point of that orange. So qualify a candidate and a lead all the way through to that next process. So we got really, really good at what did that experience look like? And how did they experience us? And how did that cascade into our values? So if a, if a candidate spoke to one person on one team and then the next day they had a conversation with another person in our business, they experienced the exact same process or, um, yeah, candidate experience. So it, it, there was continuity and consistency in our approach. And that meant that if people went on holiday and somebody else was picking up a candidate, they got no, the level of service they got was exactly the same. And most importantly, it wasn't just the level of service that they got, let's say, from a manager, it was actually a level of service that they got from everybody in our business, including even our receptionist, who, by the way, in my mind, you know, gave one of the best uh, candidate and client services there was. So, This is about understanding your candidates and understanding what it is that they need. And when we think about how we do this for our clients, I think we're very good at at looking at what's our service offering for our client and what's that experience that they're having and what's that touch point system. And what we're talking about here is, is picking that up and replicating that with your candidates and with that set of customers as well, going back to the machines that we were talking about. And this is what made the difference for us in doubling then our our success rate of our process from our candidates into our business to those that were placed. And it meant that our CRM, the value of our CRM, the intellectual property, Um, quadrupled because it meant that we suddenly were collecting our candidates and then we had a nurture, we had a a place where those candidates were that was actually in our CRM system that we owned, not externally of our business. And this is, again, it's a a real game changer. I think a lot of people, I'd love to know as well, um, if if you're watching, if you put a value on your CRM right now, is that really giving you that return and value back? Or is that CRM just become a bit of a bucket where you've got some candidates in there, but can you search for them 
you know, can you find, you should be able to streamline for a job that comes in today within, you know, a, a matter of minutes, you should be able to streamline a hot list of candidates off your database for that. Um, and I know that's further down the line of what we're talking about here, Nikki, but that's where this process, this is the starting point of where you can go and you can take that for your business. And if anyone wants to sell their business, there's value in that database for sure. Oh, massive. Um, just really quickly, can you share with people what you would do for touch points or nurture points? Um, in terms of how many or specifics? Well, just some ideas of what you did. Yeah. So, I mean, we really understood our candidates like we did our clients. And you know where you this goes back to how you interview those candidates. What information do you find out about those candidates? Um, so let's take it to something really simple, which I, I imagine a lot of people do for their clients. They might send them birthday cards, for example. So this would be what is the inside leg measurement? What are the the motivators? What are the what's the information about my candidates that I also could be collecting? Like, are they married? Do they have kids? What's their favorite football team? Um, you know, what's their favorite cu cup of tea? Um, you know, it could be anything, um, for example, to the type of coffee that they like or where they go for their coffee. Um, so we're talking about quite personal information about our candidates as well as professional that actually set apart then how we can create this nurture sequence that means that there are touch points happening that really tap into me as an individual because that's what they're buying. They're buying trust and credibility from you and your brand, not just about what you know. Um, about having the top job, job, but actually, if you're going to map my career process and map my journey for 10, 20 years, you need to find out personal information about me. If you're really going to be able to pick up the phone and not just talk to me about a job, it's the same thing that we have with clients. Um, you know, I recall when we used to do business development and people, they were, you know, you'd have people wouldn't you pick up the phone to a client and say oh you've got any jobs you know awful you don't want to do that in the same way you don't want to pick up the phone to a candidate and say are you looking for a job right now because again it's like we've moved beyond that um and if if we haven't then here's your invitation to move beyond that and actually this is about um creating something that is high level high touch but will generate you a 50% plus conversion rate of your candidates. Um, yeah. And that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But the thing is, you're not going to do this with all candidates. It's no. it's very much just those 20%. Yeah. So the blue bits you're going to delegate to admin people, the orange and the green bits, are what you would probably have in house, but you could, or a higher level, a uh, high skill level of person, doesn't even need to be somebody in house. We've got quite a lot of our clients who say might be based, I don't know, I'm just thinking one of them who's based in Dubai. She's got an amazing VA who's based in South Africa who actually has the conversations with the candidates. It doesn't matter, like you can be virtual or you could be in house, doesn't matter. Mm. So, but it's very important there's a consistent amount of message that needs to be sent out each day and it is a mathematical it's in a mathematical thing and we look then at how we optimize that system so we get our percentages better it's a bit like it's a bit like mcdonald's i watched that film the other day katie yeah, about, right. um, about, about it um and i can't remember the name of it it's, it's on netflix and if you google ray Kroc and the, one of the guys the mcdonald's guys was what we call this he's, he's a mechanic who literally is anal was anal with like if you kick it for 10 seconds less it's even better so that's what we're talking about with this process once we get the system in play that we tested we know that it works with the messaging you want someone who's just going to be consistently sending out 20 of these a day 80 of these a day and and that then when you do that consistently three months six months nine months 12 months that's where these candidates start to come in mm. so um so what I want to talk about what Marcus did really quickly. So once he got his head around this and he was like, he mapped his process, like, oh my God, I don't need to do half of this stuff, but he did need to set up the system. So he wrote the messages, he tested the messages to make sure they worked. He then hired a VA 
to do the heavy lifting work. He worked for him, I think, two hours a day. And then what happened is he started getting so many candidates coming in. He was doing the interviewing, got so many candidates coming in, he didn't know have enough time to, to interview them. So he then hired a resourcer who did the initial screening. He then still interviewed them. He got even more candidates coming in. He's like, oh, my God, I'm back to working 12-hour days. So he then hired another more experienced consultant who looked after the candidate. So what would then happen was all this system was set up. He'd get given a really good candidate once a day. He'd speak to the candidate, you know, maybe for 10, 15 minutes, market them out, get them to two interviews with his clients, bam, place them. So it, he then ended up doing a lot more of the job that he loved which was business, business development and got rid of all of the other stuff that needed to happen. But his VAs were then happy as Larry because they were doing the bit they loved. His resourcer, happy as Larry because she does the bit that she loves, hates business development, loves looking after people. And that's how you then get a high performing team. Yeah. So working and on that, because a lot of, um, I know that there are a number of people, um, recruitment business owners, who maybe were that top biller, you know, for a Hayes or a Michael Page or maybe somewhere else. They were a top biller and they loved doing that. And then they, they rightly so, decided, actually, I want to rec- create a recruitment business for myself and I want to do this for me. And so those top biller traits and then they start the recruitment business. And then, as we were saying, you know, in this webinar, they get to that point of, oh, my God, I'm not doing actually the part that I love, which is billing, um, business development, talking to clients. I'm actually doing all this other stuff because let's be honest, a lot of the other things around the candidate process and other areas are actually the time consuming things. So for those people, if you're that type of person that you were that top biller and then you decided you wanted to start your own business, now you feel like you're totally out of flow and and you're you're just doing everything. This is so important this change for you because this is where I think people feel like I've started a business and actually is this right for me I even had somebody yesterday say maybe I should just go and get another job it's like no 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 it's not you it's this goes back to a systems problem it's because you are trying to do parts of the job where you're not actually in your genius zone so um, and I know we're touching or I'm touching here slightly on the 360 But this is also what we're talking about here is if you're working that model and you're not enjoying what you're doing and you're finding that you're reaching these problems, this is is what it's about. And this is, again, what you can change. So um, know that there is a way. Yeah. Yeah. And it was interesting because Marcus, I remember one of on one of the calls, he's like, oh, my God. So all I need is probably two other people in my team and I can generate half a million pounds. And some. and some and he and we're like yeah he's like fantastic so don't need to manage many people no okay. but I can have a hugely profitable business and actually we're now at the point with him where we need to replicate Marcus so he can totally step out of the business so we'll be looking probably for a, a consultant but probably will come from industry who will train you know training on, on on the process that Marcus does with with the BD side so you don't need to have a massive team as long as you've got systems in place and you know people who are delivering parts of the system and you have a hugely profitable business yeah. you can step away from so you know Marcus he said you know last year I was on my own hit zero month panic reached out to us, started with them in May, have implemented, and I hit 43K. This was in um, just a couple of weeks ago, actually, maybe last week. 72K so far this year from January. And more importantly, I love my work again. Mm-hmm. And that is what it, this is all about, you know, people being in flow, having time, having financial freedom, time freedom. That yeah. is what this is all about. Anyway, so Katie, we need to um, yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to wrap it up. Okay, all right. So um, look, we have given you a huge amount of information today, and you've probably got two options. Option one is you can figure this out on your own. So you can go away, and you can get some results. You can take what we've um, shared with you today, and you can get some results. And after all, that is the reason why Nikki and I are doing this event today. But 
We also know there are those of you who want to save time, you want to get to the results quicker, and you are the people that we would love to have a conversation with right now. So if you have got what you need, and, um, and, and, and that's no worries at all either, by the way, you can press leave and you can leave the webinar now. Um, and if you like, it's done. We've, we've kind of reached the end of that. But for those of you who are interested in taking action, for those of you that want to hear about what is next, stay on the line um, and we're going to talk to you about what we're doing next. OK, so for those of you that want to do that and you want to stay here, then um, please do so. For those of you that just want to jump off, that's cool, too. So those people that want to take the next steps and those people that want to take action. And you are obviously interested in taking action because you wouldn't be here. So if you are, I'd love to know, actually, can you just pop in the chat box if you are here and you want to take action right now, if that's the case, put yes in the chat box. Um, because here's what we're going to do today. Nikki and I have 15 spots available over the next week to talk to you one on one to start brainstorming out this plan, what we've talked about today for you. So how your attraction machine can work for you. Now, they are one on one sessions, so we only have 15 available of them. But if that is something that you are interested in, here's what I'd like you to do right now is to go to this www. No, it's not even www. It's HTTPS. So um, backslash backslash profit accelerator um, dot centered excellence dot co dot UK. Is that a backslash apply or copy and paste what we have got here in the screen and pop that into your browser? Now, what will happen when you do that is you will go to a form and we ask you a little bit more about your business. So what you do, who you help um, and just some basics about your business, just so that when we get on that call with you, we're already ahead and we can jump straight in on that call with you to get you the answers. Um, you'll notice you'll get redirected to a calendar page. That's where you can book the time with us to have a chat. Um, you're going to schedule in that time. We're going to carve out 15 to 20 minutes to go through a plan with you. So that's what's going to happen on that call. You will walk away with information. At the very least, you'll know exactly what steps you need to make for you to start building this attraction machine. So that is the next step. If you want to move faster, you want to do, you want some help around that, that's what we're here for. So as I mentioned, we've only got 15 slots. So um great. Nikki's popped that. Yeah. 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 What I'm also just want to say is there's no charge to these sessions. So they are like they are fundamentally free. The only the only um input that you need to, to bring to it is your time, your time investments. So they are they are free, they are value add. And, you know, we're putting this out there as, as an offer Offer if you want to do that today. Now, Johan, I can see you saying, and can you add the link here? For some reason, the link's not coming up as I'm putting it in. So I'm, I am going to try and switch over to my LinkedIn now. Okay, if you, if you lose me, I'll dial back in. Okay, all right. So, again, please, if you're interested, as Nikki said, non-obligation, it's free. Book that time with us because we have only got 15 slots so and pop in the chat box if you've already done that if you've been able to use that um link pop in the chat box or even just pop in the chat box that you'd like the call with us just put yes and i can make a note of your name or nikki will make a note of your name we'll collect your name today and we'll make sure that you get that call with us um so um pop it in the chat box and let us know if you want to do that um and the link will be up for you as well we'll actually leave it i don't know if it's possible yeah to leave it on nikki's linkedin for you so that um if um if when we've gone it's not available yeah and um what you can also do by the way is just reach out either in mail nikki or in mail me and we can book those sessions um, with you so let us know if you want to have that time with us um and we can do that with you cool. so right. yeah now um the other thing we promised because this is live if you've got any questions 
Hmm. Any questions about issues with your candidates, issues with generating people, whatever, whatever you need help with, now is the time to type in your question into the chat box. Okay. So I think it might be a couple of seconds behind us on the line. So just give people um, time to type in any questions you've got or need any advice on this candidate generation issue. So Katie, um, is, it, is it possible to do this system if you are like a solo recruiter or if you've got like, a, say you've got like a bigger team, how would you implement this system if you've got a very established team? Um, well, either, um, either team, it's, it's not about size. It's actually about the system here. So this is the beauty of it is whether you are one person and, you know, you're top biller and actually, you know, that you need more of those candidates coming through or whether you're a larger team and, and, and like, well, why don't I give the case study of, um, of Aspire? Because this is what we did. We, actually went from a 360 model to creating an entire talent hub where we had those um that team of people um supporting the whole division or, or the whole operation in london so that was something that we totally restructured for our business so it's not so that whole, the whole focus was purely candidates yeah totally all candidates and you know these were people then that were um mapping candidates so they would be think of them like a, a candidate care team they literally would be how we find them how we source them how we interact with them how we nurture them the experience that they have the post placement management as well as the pre placement management um so so this was looking at our candidates as customers and then giving them an entire customer experience and journey with our business. And, and that's what really um, changed the way we did recruitment and changed, you know, the face of, of that business. Um, and this is when I think, Nikki, about the clients that we're working with right now. And OK, you know, a lot of our clients aren't that that size necessarily um their niche boutique recruiting businesses that that we fundamentally help they this is putting a difference on average for our clients like four times is a minimum that people can expect in terms of the return um on the top, the the revenue and the um, conversions that they're getting. So it would be a very interesting exercise. But I think if we look at the amount of people, even just talking, you know, we I did the hero series earlier with Kyle, and you know, Kyle has gone from he's he actually stated in that hero series, Katie, I joined you at the end of September. By November, I had my best month ever, and that was because we actually used your attraction machine and we set that up and we were we were using it and we started having somebody help us resource and we got clear where we were in our flow zone yes yes so you and and changed the model went from 360 <laughs> to a 240 and that's yeah. fundamentally what we're talking about here so if you want to go faster you want to literally be given the plug and play stuff. You want help implementing it. You want to get results really quickly. Then all we need to do is book a call with either Katie, myself, or one of our scale specialists, and we can run you through what it would look like, the impact it will have on your business and how it would work. So guys, thank you so much for your time today. It's been our pleasure to be here with you. And we look forward to, um, to hearing from you soon. Cheerio.